Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and today I am going to be talking about Adox Scala 50, a black and white film that can be processed as a negative or as a slide. So if you've never heard of black and white slide film or you're interested in learning more, then please stick around and we'll talk all about it. Whether you are new to film photography or a long time analog enthusiast, our channel covers all things film, from tips and tricks, film reviews to how to videos. Subscribe now and keep those notifications turned on so that you never miss a beat. Happy shooting! So, Adox Scala 50 film. Before we get into the film specifically, as always, it's always fun to talk about the brand. Adox is actually one of the oldest uh, brands specific to film photography. It was started in Germany in 1860. So 162 years old. Of course, when it started, there was no such thing as 35 mil film or even the idea of, of coating chemistry onto plastic wasn't yet around. So they specialized in wet collodion, they specialized in glass plates, but then over time they moved into cameras in the early 20th century and also then into more consumer friendly formats as that consumer market exploded throughout the early 20, mid 20th century. Their specialty has tended to be in black and white films, specifically focusing on really good detail. The brand itself changed hands several times um, around the turn of the century as uh, the digital revolution happened. It is currently now owned by the German bigger company, Photo Impex, who continue to produce and manufacture these films in facilities around Austria and Germany. So there we go. So Adox know their stuff. Um, as I say, their, their heritage goes back over 150 years, which is super awesome. So Scala film. Now slide black and white. So a very quick summary of uh, negative versus positive, positive being slide film. You may, if you shot quite a lot of film, be very used to seeing negatives. They are the typical, you know, you pull out a colour and, and the colours are all the wrong way round. Um, or in black and white, everything is again the wrong way round. Lights are dark, darks are light. So you can hold it up to light and see what the image is by inference, but it's not really the image itself. And the reason that that is the most popular one is because then when you print, you print by creating a negative as well. And a negative of a negative is a positive. So you send light through the negative onto paper that is then developed as a negative of the negative. And what you get is you get then the photo where blacks are blacks, whites are whites, reds are reds, etc., etc. You have the final image. Now slide film is not necessarily designed to be printed in that way. In fact, it isn't designed to be printed onto a negative. Um, what you will get is if it's developed as a positive, as soon as you hold it up to the light from the very start, you will see the image exactly as you saw it at the time. So on color slide film like Ektachrome, like Velvia, it will be really vivid colors exactly as you saw it. Black and white, you will immediately see the image that you had, of course, in black and white. <laughs> it won't do magic there, um, but it's still an absolutely wonderful moment. Now you might think, why would you have slide film if uh, printing is so common? Well, there's two things really. One is when you look at a slide film through a projector or through light, you are seeing the, the purest form photo, I think it's probably fair to say. As soon as you make a print of a negative, you are interpreting it to some way. The uh, light you choose, the contrast gradient you choose, the filters you choose, the, the focus, the distance, all of them change the final print, which is why limited edition prints and why prints of, you know, Ansel Adams photos by Ansel Adams are, are so much more valuable. Um, other people can create prints, but it's not as easy as just, you know, pressing a button and, and out it comes. There is still some artistic, a lot of artistic uh, choices and ability that go into making a print. Whereas a slide film, if you have taken a slide photo and you put a light behind it, assuming you're not doing something crazy with the light, um, then what you are getting is exactly what the photographer intended you to see. There are still things you can then do to distort it, as I say, different lights, or you project onto different things maybe, and you can turn it into more of an artistic expression by display, but fundamentally, if you took a photo of uh, a cat or a landscape and you had in your mind certain um, composition and the colors and the contrast and you chose a film that would match that, that is what you're getting. There we go. So black and white slide film is less common these days than color slide film in particular. It also does need slightly different processing. Um, it's worth pointing out at this stage, I'm recording this in July, 2022. Our lab currently cannot process 
in positive, unfortunately. It's on our to-do list, but it's likely to be 2023 before we get to it. Um, we have a few other things that we need to sort out first, which is very exciting. But there are labs around the UK and around the world that can. So personally, I use Silverpan um, in Bristol, um, run by the wonderful Duncan for any of my niche processing. And, and the reason it is more niche is because it needs a different chemistry, it needs different temperatures, it needs um, either much more care with the with normal equipment or a bit more specialist equipment will help you. So sort of a, a, um, a bigger Jobo processor, for example, will make it easier to process. But don't let that give me away. So it is possible to do that. Also, it is very possible to shoot this as a black and white negative film. And if you do, you will still get really fine resolution. You'll still get these gorgeous, rich um, shadings from the darkest black all the way through. Um, it also does have similar characteristics to color slide film in that its latitude is not particularly forgiving. So when it's ISO 50, whether you shoot it as a negative or as a positive, um, it's not gonna be as forgiving as most black and white films would be. You know, HP 5, 400, people can shoot it from ISO 50 to 3200. And yes, you get different grains and contrasts, but fundamentally your image still, still remains the same. Scale of 50, you won't be able to push it as, as, as far. Um, and you don't have that much room to pull it, to be fair, but you don't, you aren't able to push it so far, so you'll have to be a little bit more careful maybe about the exposure versus normal. But don't be scared off by that. This isn't the kind of thing that immediately, as soon as you're slightly wrong, we'll, we'll just send a you know error message <laughs> to the lab. You'll still get images out of it, just in case of, it's just in terms of getting the very best out of the film. And then if you do choose to go down the positive route, which I really encourage you to do so, um, it's, a, it's a real experience to be able to then see your strips of film held up to the light and the image is exactly as they are. One thing that I always love to play with in this idea is then be able to shoot a series and having almost like a comic strip because it is visible straight away. The, the strip of film itself can become a, a creative piece of art by itself rather than the individual images. It can provide a bit more context than it would before. That's a really fun thing to play with. But if you don't want to go down the route, um, or you, you use a lab that doesn't have the facilities and you'd rather stick with it, um, then of course, just enjoy this as a very sharp, very premium, beautiful looking black and white film, and you won't be disappointed. ISO 50, so on bright sunny days, which hopefully in July and August you will get enough of, no matter where you are, then it's a wonderful film to shoot in those situations. There's a wonderful article on 35mmc by Ken Davis, who talks a lot about this film, um, shot it a lot more than I am, so probably a load more knowledge about the whole topic. So we'll try and link it below. I'd encourage you to have a read. I mean, one of the things that he talks about is that there is nothing quite like um, when you've shot it as a slide, when you then had it processed as a positive, as a slide, then getting a projector, a bright light source to shine behind it. I mean, you can then see the detail. You know, you'd, if you projected it here, it would be the size of a, you know, a large TV screen or half the wall, and you wouldn't be able to see any loss of detail, any resolution, any you know, pixelation equivalent that you would expect from a TV when you get this close to it, you would see a fantastically sharp image from top to bottom, from left to right. So that is ultimately, I think, the, the purest way of shooting using this film. But as I say, don't worry if it's not for you. There's lots of other fun things to do about it. And there we go. If you've ever shot black and white slide film before, please do let us know in the comments below your experience of it. Did you like it? Um, did you shoot it as positive and develop it like that? Or did you shoot it as negative and just enjoy the detail and the resolution that you can get from, from this film? Um, or if you're excited about shooting it, let us know your plans. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back in soon.